Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In the early 1980s, the public was introduced to an aircraft that resembled a pyramid with wings when viewed from the front. This aircraft was called the F-117, and it was our first taste of new technology. Stealth Introduced in 1988, the F-117 Nighthawk revolutionized stealth technology and military aviation. Lockheed Skunk Works Division developed it in secret in the 1970s, and it was the first operational aircraft to use stealth technology. With its first flight in 1981, the F-117 reshaped modern air warfare doctrines. Its combat debut during the 1989 Panama invasion and major success in the 1991 Gulf War, when it infiltrated Iraqi defenses undetected, solidified its legacy. What we say as an Air Force is it doesn't matter what defenses you put up, it doesn't matter how deep you try to bury yourself and how much you surround yourself with, say it doesn't matter any of that stuff, this airplane will come and get you. In 1997, the world's first and only stealth strategic bomber, the B-2 Spirit, was introduced. Except for the fact that these bombers are almost invisible to radar, they carry up to 40,000 pounds of ordnance in their internal weapons base. Hot pit refueling is a method developed to allow aircraft to refuel with engines running. This allows aircraft to take off at short notice or to lessen turnaround time during crew changes. One crew leaves the aircraft while the other takes the position inside the cockpit and resumes the mission. Before a mission can start, the B-2 must be refueled, and preventative maintenance checks and services, PMCS, ensure it is operable for its flight, but is also rearmed. It takes precision and expertise to arm a B-2 Spirit strategic stealth bomber. Munitions specialists, dressed in protective gear, expertly load the aircraft's two interior bays with a variety of munitions. They use specialized munitions handling devices, such as munitions handling units, MHU, to position guided bombs meticulously, and possibly nuclear weapons, adhering to tight safety regulations. Various missiles and bombs can be carried by the B-2, including various guided weapons, such as the Joint Direct Attack Munitions. Then, as another mission or training flight requires, the B-2 Spirit, powered by four General Electric F-118 GE-100 non-afterburning turbofan engines, each providing 17,300 pounds of thrust, prepares to take off. The stealth bomber, with a wingspan of 172 feet, moves gently down the runway, its distinctive flying wing design reducing radar cross-section, RCS.
When the B-2 reaches V-1 speed, it lifts off and ascends for a high-altitude strategic mission. Even with a 6,900-mile range, the B-2 can achieve much greater ranges utilizing tactical air-to-air -air refueling, TAR. When the B-2 Spirit is not in flight, it is kept in a very special, climate-controlled hangar that is made to protect the bomber's sensitive stealth coverings. Advanced environmental systems keep the temperature and humidity in check at these sites, which is important for maintaining the aircraft's low radar observability. These hangars have strict security measures that demonstrate how important the B-2 is strategically and how far technology has come. Inside, specialized ground support equipment is ready to go, ensuring that the Spirit is ready for various missions that it can be asked to perform. Careful steps are taken to get joint air-to-surface standoff missiles, JASMs, ready to be loaded. To keep the B-2 stealth, these long-range precision-guided weapons are carefully placed inside its internal base. Each JASM's integration adds another 230-mile range standoff capability to the B-2. In the U.S. Air Force fleet, the B-52 Stratofortress is the oldest strategic bomber being operated. These bombers are used for planned strikes, but must also be airborne in a short space of time to react to an enemy's strategic or even tactical move. While the air crew of five grabs and dones their gear, the ground crew starts with a reduced pre-flight PMCS checklist. Pilots, however, also check their gear before flights to ensure operability. Systems such as oxygen masks must work perfectly for aircrew safety. Scramble exercises are conducted to test and minimize the time it takes for the air and ground crews to get the B-52 airborne as quickly as possible. Under normal conditions, it takes about an hour to start all eight of the B-52's engines. A faster way had to be found for scramble exercises, and the cart start method was developed. First, cartridges are inserted into each engine's starter mechanism When the explosive charge ignites, it produces a high-pressure gas that powers up the engine turbines. This dramatic, smoke-belching procedure is an impressive display of raw power, quickly bringing the bomber's engines up and ready for mission deployment. With this method, engine startup is drastically reduced and the B-52 can get airborne quickly.
One year after the B-52 was introduced to the U.S. Air Force, the Lockheed U-2 was introduced. Preparing a U-2 pilot for flight is a meticulous process, similar to outfitting an astronaut. Pilots wear high-altitude pressure suits designed to protect against low pressure and a lack of oxygen at altitudes above 70,000 feet. This equipment includes a helmet with a built-in communication system, gloves that work with the aircraft's controls, and boots that are sealed to the suit to ensure pressurization. Pre-flight checks include a complete evaluation of the suit's integrity, verifying all seals are airtight and life support systems are operational. Simultaneously, the aircraft is subjected to rigorous testing, with an emphasis on its unique reconnaissance equipment, avionics, and airframe integrity to ensure the pilot's safety and mission success. When the U-2 was being developed, the engineers needed a way to increase its altitude. To achieve this, they needed to cut down on weight, which left them with a simple bicycle layout landing gear. To compensate for the loss of stability from a wider landing gear system, it was decided to outfit the U-2 with a set of pogo wheels one under each wing. These were designed to fall away from the aircraft during takeoff and are retrieved by the ground crew. U-2s are also notoriously difficult to fly. Therefore, a chase car pilot speeds along with the U-2 during takeoff to help guide the mission pilot until he is airborne. At an altitude of 70,000 feet, the pilot can see the curvature of the Earth. At this altitude, the U-2 must maintain a speed called coffin corner by the pilots. Fly too slow and it stalls, but flying too fast can make it break apart. And if it stalls, recovering it is very difficult due to a lack of air pressure. Landing the U-2 is just as difficult, and once again, a chase car is used for another U-2 pilot to guide the mission pilot verbally. Touchdown must be perfect to protect the wings from impacting the runway. Once the pilot does a touchdown, he keeps the aircraft level for as long as possible before it loses momentum and one wing rests on the tarmac. With proper maintenance and control, even the older aircraft are expected to remain operational for as long as economically viable. At the same time, the stealth fleet is expanded with even newer bombers that would shape the face of stealth warfare. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.